Well, hello again, awesomers. I am so glad to be here. It's me. It's your old buddy, Steve Simonson. And we're doing another episode of the awesomers.com podcast today. Now, I've been advised by pretty smart people that we're already past like 280 episodes overall. So um, I hope some, you know, one or more of those have been valuable to you. And we're we're in this uh, Founder Foundations mini series that I'm I'm trying to pour out some of the the knowledge that that we have here and make this your own little fortress of solitude that you can go to and say, uh, gosh, when I'm thinking about training myself to be a better leader or better CEO or I'm training my team to become better executives and leaders, uh, what's the roadmap that I can follow? And sure enough. We're giving you that blueprint in this uh, 31 day mini series. Now, the great news, everybody, is we've passed the first couple sub modules, if you will, and we're now moving into the financial module. So, finance is a module that is really important and I think often ignored by entrepreneurs. In fact, um, you know, for all those entrepreneurs who have a, a stack of receipts in a shoebox that they turn into their account once a year, uh, you're part of the problem. Please, please, uh, let's pay close attention on getting our financial system to where it becomes a scoreboard for you instead of a an albatross that is hanging around your neck once a year and the, you hate it. And if if this resonates with anybody, like if tax times comes around and you really don't have any idea how much you owe in taxes and it's a, a burden and a stress and a pain, uh, definitely you are, um, you're in for a treat because if you get it right, it now becomes not just not a problem, no longer an afterthought, no longer a surprise. It's planned. It's um, a known quantity, uh, literally and figuratively. And it is something that you can take joy in because it becomes a scoreboard on how you understand what's happening in your business. So when we think of you know the finance overview of your business, we need to think about the process of that overview first and foremost. And again, in this series, I'm trying not to get into the tactical levels, but I'm going to give you some of the broad strokes of why I think it matters. So think of your business like this. You're doing a bunch of stuff, right? All of these um, business activities, for lack of a better word, are things that go through your day-to-day -day business, right? These are, oh, I'm shipping something. Oh, I'm advertising something. Oh, I uh, got a return on something. Oh, I have freight. I've had to send freight forwarding from China. Oh, I had to buy some product from supplier A, B, or C. Um, it, this applies to service businesses, any business, manufacturing or otherwise. We all do stuff in our business. Uh, then that feeds into your finance system. And by having a, a finance system of whatever form it's taking now, you're trying to keep score. And uh, for those who may recall, we love to say no score, no game. And it's much more fun when it's a game anyway, instead of a, that albatross I referred to earlier. So finance then shows up and says, well, gosh, I'm going to give you some, some uh, let's call them standardized metrics. Things that are included in those would be your financial statements, your balance sheet, your cash flow statement, uh, your P&L, profit loss statement, right? Um, gosh, here's a novel concept. What about a budget? And how are we comparing to the budget? And any other kind of controls or uh, reporting that you've built, baked into your system that may um, happen on a hierarchical uh, level. For example, if somebody's in marketing, they're, they're probably keeping really good close track of what the conversion rate and cost per acquisition and uh, lifetime values are for your customers. Whereas somebody in operations may be, you know, how fast are we? getting back to customers and resolving problems, what's our claims rate, right? They, they have kind of different metrics that should follow that functional hierarchy that your business operates in, which every business, by the way, operates in. Now, the, the step beyond that, and, and this maybe misses uh, the opportunity for a lot of entrepreneurs, is, hey, what do we do once we have those things? The answer is we should analyze them. We should read them. We should ingest the information you know, the data and then decide what information it's telling us and then make the requisite decisions related to those um, outputs. So you might say, you know, well, gosh, Steve, that sounds like a lot of work. And <laughs> it's some work, but it doesn't have to be uh, 
I don't think it has to be that hard at all. In fact, many cases for different kinds of businesses, you can automate a lot of your financial statements. So as an example, you know, parsimony without A to X, without QuickBooks or anything else, it just brings in all of your Amazon transaction by transaction automatically. Uh, now the free version has limitations, everybody, uh, but they're, you know, for the people who are stepping up and paying, they're getting all of their transactions in. It automatically builds, you know, the appropriate PL balance sheets, has all of their inventory at every warehouse, uh, wherever it is, whether it's in your own warehouse or Amazon. And it can do that in a very automated basis, depending on, you know, how, how connected you are. So it can do it for Shopify, it can do it for WooCommerce, uh, it can do it for Amazon, FBA, and, and um, ShipStation, and on and on. Now, there are some things that can't be automated. So you either have a gap in your system or you have to enter it through some manual basis. Things like, um, you know, you got a cell phone bill uh, that got mailed to you. What do you do with that? In, in our case, uh, any of those things that come by mail, they come to, a, you know, some box or uh, mailing address somewhere. Those are then scanned in and finance then you know, goes through their finance inbox, takes all of that scanned mail, decides, you know, what business unit it should be attributed to and make sure that it's paid and recorded uh, in the system. So it's actually interesting, you know, in our system, you're actually able to go in, not just find the vendor and find an individual bill or invoice from that vendor. Uh, so it's called a purchase invoice, but you'll actually be able to find if it was a mailed in the original scan of that document to compare and go, well, Gosh, we sent the power company, you know, a thousand dollars. We normally send them a hundred dollars. Why did that happen? Maybe there was a, a true legitimate error, or maybe there's some other anomaly. But either way, you can look at the original with the virtual and have some sort of audit basis to go, oh, okay, yeah, everything's fine. I see here that we, you know, had some big event and and used extra power, whatever it is. My whole point, everybody, is that you can make you know, dashboards and scoreboards so much more interesting. And again, I'm not just advocating, you know, uh, parsimony. You can use any system you want. QuickBooks, you know, has plenty of beautiful whiz bang charts and graphs. And with A to X and other things, you can automate it. And there's plenty of services that will help do that for you. So again, um, if you go to the empowery.com partner directory, and it's been a while since I made this disclaimer, but like I have no affiliation with any of these people. I don't personally make any money on any of these things. I just believe that Empowery does a great job and we help uh, sellers kind of synthesize out some of the the noise in the system. And, you know, the, that directory is a reliable place to go find stuff. And it benefits any Empowery member because you're in cash back and it benefits Empowery because they get a little Scooby snack to keep that nonprofit operational which means old Steve doesn't have to fund its operations. That's good. Uh, I did my part um, and it's up on its feet. And now it's up to you guys on how you want to use it. So my point is you can automate it and have outside services give you the scoreboard. Now it's up to you to ingest and analyze it. And if you need help with that, some of those companies can offer you, you know, kind of a monthly call to help you read and understand, well, here's what's happening in your P&L. Here's what's happening in your balance sheet. You know, um, And by the way, I've found mistakes in just about every financial statement I've ever been presented. As soon as I start asking questions like, you know, why are we spending so much on office supplies? It'll come back and go, oh, well, somebody mis, mis put in this advertising into office supplies, right? Or some other example like that. But if you're not really tuned into it, you're missing an opportunity. I'll give you one tactical level pro tip. Uh, whether or not you have a budget, you should be tracking your spend month over month and year over year at a minimum. You, you could add quarter over quarter too if you really wanted to, but month over month to see any month to month change and then year over year compared to the same period of time one year earlier. Now, there's some times where things are going to go up as a natural course of doing business. We double the business, we double our purchases, so the, the ratio in terms of your, your business expense and your revenue should be following the same line. And if there's any breakage in that line, ideally to the upside, that's getting leverage. But if there's downside, like we're selling more stuff, 
but our costs are increasing faster than the sales. At some point, those are going to collide and you're actually building a larger, less profitable business the more you sell. All of these things will be borne out by your basic financial system. So this is this is level setting. This is making sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, I'm not going to harp on budgeting right now, but I would encourage you to consider thinking about budgets for the future. It's a process that you do typically at the end of one year and it leads into the next year. And then that helps you start to think about where am I on track with my strategic objective? And, and then literally monthly, if you break your budget down by month, which I recommend, you can see uh, we missed on revenue, we over-delivered on profit or vice versa. You're seeing real lessons. And I, I wanna just reiterate this point. Taking lots of data and turning it into information is the point of your finance system. Having a financial system that gives you not just raw outputs, but turns it into tangible, actionable steps, that is your objective. And part of it is a system and part of it is your own acumen and ability to understand the nuances of what these messages may mean. And if you don't have that skill, there are plenty of people who can help you. There, you know, you don't have to do the, you know, the big, bad full-time CFO or even an incremental, uh, you know, uh, part-time CFO. You could find a CPA that will help you do this once a month and you pay them and you're fair about it and you learn from them and you get better and you get better and you get better. And that's really the message. Why not improve yourself and improve your business in a consistent, ongoing way? Because I guarantee your competition is doing just that. Uh, my old buddy, uh, Michael Pankowski, always says, somewhere, someone out there is practicing. And when they may, meet you on the battlefield, they will win. And that should keep us all just paranoid enough to keep learning. I hope that helps everybody. Please share, subscribe, comment, save, et cetera, et cetera. Do all the things that the algorithms love because... We love entrepreneurs, and we would sure love to share these messages with more of them. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.